So today we're working on 110,000 BTU three zone baseboard system. Uh, we're using the Navian boiler, Navian manifold, Taco air separator. We're using a VT2218 from Taco. I absolutely love these. Uh, it's a Delta T pump and basically you just set the sensor on the feed and return piping and it will sense the tef temperature difference and you could set it to whatever delta you'd like uh, typically this one will be set to 20 degrees and it'll just ramp up or down that motor inside to keep it at a 20 uh, degree delta it's really really nice um, I could go more into that just on this pump alone maybe a separate video on that um, so so right now we just have all of our parts sort of scattered around right now we're just planning out how everything's going to lay out Currently right now I'm just working on getting all these threaded fittings uh, together here. So as you can see I'm assembling some stuff. Uh, pressure relief valve, another air separator here for the boiler itself. Uh, getting all these fittings together. I am doing this one with ProPress, the past couple ones. I've done fully threaded systems. I've done ProPress systems. This is a mix of both. Um, some of the items they don't offer in ProPress yet, so I'm kind of adapting them by uh, using these thread adapters. I really like ProPress. Again, I could do a whole video on whether that's, uh, you know, the way to go or not. I personally love it. Um, it obviously makes for a super easy install. Uh, so we'll give you an updated video as we get things together here. All right, so at this point, I have all of my components connected to the boiler itself uh, the main stuff that I just like to get out of the way in the beginning uh, this customer requested PEX fittings for attaching all of the hot and cold connections for the domestic hot water as well as for the heating zones and supplies and returns so I'll kind of get to that in a minute um, so basically how this specific boiler works it's a combi boiler with an internal heat exchanger that allows the heating system to also supply domestic hot water so right here on this unit they've actually implemented now a auto feeder you used to have to put a pressure regulator to keep it around 12 psi for the boiler uh, feed system uh, part of the system uh, so all you need really now is just a check valve um, and it'll automatically fill the system and maintain that specific pressure that it needs. Uh, it's, it's a nice feature. Some people have said they've had issues with it. Filling it can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes as it is feeding an empty system. Sometimes it thinks there's an issue because it is just such a lack of water that it goes into a lockup mode. And if, if that is the instance, you know, if that happens, you can feed it another way through uh, other parts of the system. But anyway, that's the auto feeder on the unit. Uh, here is the connection for the domestic cold input right here. Uh, service valves I've installed so that later you could flush these out. You can shut these off and connect the uh, flushing pump and be able to just clean out uh, that heat exchanger in there. Uh, on here, these are the cold and hot um, supply and return, I, I guess, of uh, the heating system. So... I usually purchase the manifold that Navian offers. Um, it is definitely makes the job a little quicker, easier, a little pricey, but um, you know it, it, it's everything all in one. Comes with the shutoffs and everything. Uh, again, these have service valves on here as well, so you could flush that out uh, when the time comes. So what I have right here is basically everything sort of laid out in the pattern that I would like it. Um, you'll see it all start to come together as I continue building this, but essentially um, right here is where the unit feeds the hot supply for the heating system. Yeah, if you're watching this video, you know about a primary secondary plumbing. I won't get into all that. Uh, maybe in another video I can explain that, but essentially this is your feed. I'm going to loop this over here and it'll end up coming this direction feeding into the air eliminator that'll get all the air out of the system 
this will be off of this air limiter will be hanging the expansion tank um, that we'll see when this all sort of comes together this is just a general mock-up of, of how I'll be laying this out our circulator will be feeding three Taco sentry valves that I'm actually still just waiting for should be here any day um, probably tomorrow and they will basically be here I staggered this pattern so that the supply and return aren't running into each other those will those valves eventually will feed to the baseboard heaters which will then return back to these shutoff valves I always do shutoff valves in my returns and as the system gets fully put together I'll sort of explain how you can fill the system um, and the reasoning for the placement of every shutoff so after it returns it will go through this magnetic dirt separator which will pull any little dirt or magnetic or metal or not magnetic but any metal particles will get filtered through here there's a magnet on here a very strong magnet that collects all those bits and pieces that you could later flush out we always put that on the return so that it never ends up going back those particles can never make it back to the boiler in an ideal world that's that's the reasoning for putting that on the return this will be our main return shutoff and I use one of these in order to when you're filling the system it's an easy way to bleed out all of the air from the baseboard um, loops and again I'll sort of explain that once it's all together and that will basically return into here which is the heating return it goes back in the boiler gets heated and the whole process starts again alright so now we're at the point we have the supply portion roughed out uh, nothing's actually pressed at this point everything's just sort of mocked up uh, I've been doing my threaded rod and um, clamps and all that stuff sort of sorted out here getting the good layout of how I want the feed to be um, so right here what we ended up doing was using a couple 90s over here supporting it here um, the supports really you kind of have to just uh, do it as you feel is correct I mean there's a lot of weight obviously hanging on here so the more the merrier you don't want this stuff eventually coming loose or sagging over time especially with the press fittings you're really relying on that press they they do an amazing job of keeping the strength uh, but you definitely want to make sure you have as much support as possible so uh, basically the feed is going to be coming up here through the air separator through the circular up here and out to the zone valve so now I'm going to end up working on getting the return portion uh, set up here and, and all the uh, threaded rod and everything set up and I'll show you what that's like soon All right, so as you can see here everything is now completely mocked up. We have all our copper pipes uh, cut and fitted uh, slipped over All of the pro press fittings everything is mounted down. These aren't screwed in at, at everything right now, but uh, Everything is pretty much exactly where we want it so at this point uh, we could go ahead and press all the fittings and then basically move on to wiring this and finishing up the system. So the, the overall layout came out really great. Um, everything fits real nice, snug. Uh, the layout of everything, uh, obviously the circulator here going out, zone valves coming back to these valves here, uh, the magnetic dirt separator right here. Uh, everything looks really clean and ready to be pressed. So uh, next step, we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll get to wiring. Okay, so here's the system. It's uh, fully completed. All the wiring has been done. Everything's been pressed. Um, everything's been looked over and double checked just to make sure all the uh, fittings are tight and all the electrical is done correctly. Um, and make sure that all of our zones correspond with supply and return. Uh, it's easy to sort of get mixed up, especially when you end up doing a bunch of these. You start getting a little, you know, cocky, I guess. And uh, you could really miss steps, so you really have to just make sure that every time you're really taking your time assessing what's going on and uh, just double checking at the end to make sure that you didn't miss anything. It's easy to just sort of overlook anything. There's a lot going on, a lot of fittings, a lot of electrical. Um, so what we ended up doing here is uh, wiring up power to the circulator that just feeds right into the boiler and gets its 120 volts right from there. Um, then we have the zone valve wiring which again goes into uh, the boiler itself and there's the zone valve connections inside here. Um, we also 
wired up the system sensors that are required for uh, being able to tell temperatures and it, it allows the boiler to to do a little more uh, than a typical boiler would do so what this is here let me see if I could uh, walk through this part there's underneath here we attached a supply um, actually I'm sorry right here is the supply uh, temperature sensor and that allows the boiler to actually know the system temperature that's going to each zone if you rely on the internal sem uh, system temperature sensor that would be monitoring what is going through the primary loop that's not to say that what you are expecting is actually going through the secondary and uh, to your baseboard so using that um, sensor on the or on the secondary will allow the boiler to ramp up or down depending on what it needs to meet exactly what you have that set for so um, that's pretty much how that works moving over here the VT2218 um, from Taco actually is, has the ability to uh, ramp up or down in order to maintain a specific delta so what I have this set for for this system will be a 20 degree delta and how that works is this has a supply sensor and a return sensor. These get wired in as well on these on the piping here. So there's one uh, underneath here for the supply temp and there's one on the return. So that'll be able to sense the temperature going out to the zones and also be able to read what's coming back. And to maintain that 20 degree difference, this pump will automatically adjust. So it'll go up or down. Um, and this thing is, is really awesome for especially zone systems uh, with, with zone valves. Um, really nice pump. Maybe I'll do a separate video just on that. Uh, but for now, here it is. Here's a completed system. It's ready for uh, delivery and really happy with how this one came out. And we hope that uh, the customer's happy as well.